Thank you very much, Kelly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the commentary desk. It's game number two, complexity versus cognitive prime. And well, it is a, uh, a very, feels like it's like maybe bolded, italicized, and underlined that it's a 1-0. Like they really, really gave it to complexity there to cog prime. And can they bounce back, shake that one off, and bring you know the game that they have to play right. here, which is a very, very aggressive style that usually carries them to victories. Very much. Can they like? Do they have the killer instinct left in them now after that? Uh, that beat down. I think they do, and I think this is a great team to bounce back. And one difference we saw, we were talking about during the break, that you know we saw previously Dignitas when they lost, they sat in their chair and they brooded and they were talking to each other. Whereas you know we saw complexity, they got up, they huddled, they talked to each other, they got some blood flow, and they moved around. And now they're coming back and they sit down. And it's going to be completely fresh slate. And they're going to think about. It. I think this is the game for complexity to take. This is the one you look at. And honestly, you mentioned it earlier. They had very unconventional picks in the first match, and now it's like, oh, okay. I guess that's not going to work. Yeah. Let's not pick Odin. Please. Please don't pick Odin. They're not going to pick Odin, and they're, they're going to look at maybe a little stronger, maybe like an Apollo doesn't get banned. Rom is still there, even on her. Yeah, well, they're probably, you can't find a much stronger laning phase lane than, you know, Muzin and Odin or right. like Hades Loki. He's kind of like insta clear, level two, level three lanes. Right? They're guaranteed to get you farmed, but as you saw there, it does kind of fall off sometimes with. The gods that, generally speaking, have those really safe clears don't always scale as well into the mid stages of the game. Looking at Neaths and Muzins and even Cupid, right? right. Shibalanke is kind of off-brand hunters that have some kind of cheese lanes. They often don't bring that mid-game and late-game presence, which is why you see so much out of on her, out of the ROM, out of the Apollo. Well, that's why even characters like Kali are working now. It's just you think about the mid and late game, and that's all you care about. Yeah, laning yeah. phase is laning phase. You lose 1,000 gold, you lose 2,000 gold, whatever. But if you're talking about a gold fury and six towers, now you're 10x you know, right, right. the amount. 1,000 gold, 2,000 gold, 3,000 gold, Fine, 11,000 experience and 8,000 yeah. gold isn't going to be able it's to. Not it's it's cut almost, it. almost insurmountable. Yes. I mean, we've seen the victories, but they usually come on the back of either five man right. pentakills to one god or. You know, base races, things like that. But My question is, though, will they actually, uh, will they focus on weakened again, right? Because we saw the Cirquette and the, the Arachne bands again, and then we saw a focus on to, uh, you know, ally taking them out. What will they Does focus that answer on? your question? <laughs> no question. Prime bands, Arachne, that is a uh, definitely a targeted ban at weakened. But, you know, I'm, this guy doesn't seem that strong. It's more of just like, don't let weakened. him get comfortable kind of feeling. Right. Well, Weekend's fantastic with Arachne. I think it's the late game presence as well. I mean, Arachne is able to pressure early, change into mid game, harass, and then late game get the secured at the shot, which really helps. Uh, we'll see what they decide to use it for. I mean, right now, Prime is going to band out Cirquette in response, uh, so that's going to be gone. Um, I'm sorry, uh, so Complexity is going to band out Cirquette in response. Will that lead into a first pair? I think they need a strong hunter for Allied. Let's see, Prime with the second ban here uh, on their side before it goes back to Complexity for the final ban of the phase. Um, they probably don't want to give up. Yeah, they don't like that Nemesis, that John Quay. They no. don't like these frontliners, I think, from the last game. Oh, speaking and, of which. Wow, that's actually really surprising that yeah. they're going to ban a Nemesis. Almost never see this god banned, um, besides in North American land settings. This means that they're most likely not going down that same road, right? If they're basically abandoning it here, it means that they're not trying to pick the same comp here. Yeah. Sylvanas banned away. This leaves a lot of things on the table, most notably. Look, yeah. look at the favor that they're putting into their, like, their tanky frontline style Dang, gods. John they banned Nemesis, they first pick John Quay, yep. right? Here's what's really important about this. Complexity needs to draft Ra Freya right now. Right. They don't even think about it. Draft Ra Freya. These are some of their strongest gods. If they let Ra go through in this picking phase. Or Apollo. This is, yeah, I Geb, Apollo. Oh. They can pick their duo lane. It's got to be. They're going to take the Apollo. The Apollo is the They're going to take the Geb. Yeah. But this means that Prime gets Ra, and that could very well be the game. Well, we saw the, you know, and it's a difference, right? Last game, Prime was second pick. So they're like, okay, we're going to get Jong and Nemesis together. Oh, we're first pick, we one pick? Ban we're Nemesis, pick, Nemesis Jong. pick Jong. And they've got that strategy locked down. And I think the biggest problem Complexity had before in the last match is Allied could never leave his lane. Yeah. It was like his house arrest. And anytime there's a fight in the jungle, he's still locked in the lane. And so when you pick up someone like an Apollo, you can definitely move around and start joining the fight. Geb locked in means they've got that strong frontline support and they can help characters that are locked out of the wow. fight. But they've got Athena hovered Athena on Nua here. they're taking a look at. Which Geb generally counters Athena. I am literally flabbergasted Athena. that Ra has not been selected. Now going to the third picking phase. This is outrageous. Complexity needs to take it. Complexity, it's the ideal matchup to, to go into it. the John Quay with. And they, they need to take it. What it's, else do they simple. take here? They take, yeah, Thor, Thor would be the other thing that I would kind of mention, but like, is that really worth giving up? Still the Raw's in the field? Like, how is this possible? If he's not banned here, I'm taking off my headset and walking out of the room. Well, there's a lot of things on the table now for Prime. There's Thor locked in. The bands are coming through. What will they decide to go for? Probably something more towards Anditzer because the jungle hasn't been picked up. There's the Kali locked okay, in. Yep. And now back over to Prime to see what they want to ban out. Now, since they've got their Hunter and they've uh, maybe look towards the mid and try to shut that down, but, you know, Scylla is still available and Prime's not taking it. 
Yeah, they uh, the, the solo lane and the mid lane are going to be the remaining for complexity. And, uh, you know, they, they'll probably take out one of the mages who seems to be very popular in pro play. You have yeah. Ra, you have... Oh, oh there he is. Yeah, Vulcan. Yep. Um, that, that's kind of what I was expecting there. Uh, Complexity, they have a very bursty lineup with a double Shut dunk. Jerby. Put the Vulcan on top of it. Yeah, it's also a god that Jerby really likes. They've taken the new out. They've banned the Vulcan. That puts Jerby onto most likely an Agni, yeah. would you might guess, for the mid lane now. Um, and he's had moderate success with that gun. Well, when you look at it, right, new Wa locked in. Vulcan banned. What is Jerby going to play? And that's really right, what his right. bread and butter is. Yeah. So when you're putting him that deep into the... Wow. We're going to see probably a day late oh, six foot on chicken. the raw. There oh. it is. Uh, locked in here. No surprise, uh, except for the fact that it's so late. Prime now has two selections to make. What will they put into... Well, they got to pick their hunter, right? So, okay. The jungle. Rom, the perhaps. And they're going to... They're going to put a... Th Hercules. Yeah. Yeah. Question mark. Probably. Now they could they could support Hercules and yeah, Athena. They could jungle uh, Hercules. They could support Athena. They could put Jung or Nuwa in either the mid or solo Hercules. lanes. Hercules. Ah, uh, they're gonna lock the Hercules. They're gonna lock the Barracudas raw. Oh. And complexity with their final pick. They have to answer into this. They need something Locus. bursty. They're gonna take not a bursty god, but they are gonna take an assassin here to put into wow. their solo lane. That puts Jerby on raw. Oh man. Eyes on gerbs. Are you going to hit the ult, buddy? I think at this point, oh. right, you know, they're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. They're going to put Omega into the solo lane with the Jung. Same thing as last game. Yeah. It works great. And so they're going to put the Bokasur there in response, I would imagine. So it's going to Kiki, and that's exactly right. So they're going to put a Bokasur against Jung Kuei, which generally has a great matchup, right? The nom nom noms of true damage allows him to eat through that tankiness, especially with their protections. Now, with Nuwa in the mid lane, it means they have a lot of presence, right? Nuwa can rotate and get that damage out. Plus, Athena ultimate. I think that at this point, Prime's saying, okay, we got our first game. Yeah. And this is like the world's most stable team. You right, can't get right, any right. of them. They're all invincible, and Rom can fly. And at this point, you're looking at Complexity and saying, okay, you guys really need to step up and take this match because we're comfortable. Right, and Complexity's drafted a relatively standard team, albeit getting him in very bizarre order, taking a raw as one of the last picks in the game. Um, right. But their team is pretty good. It's pretty bursty. It's very reliant on raw. He's the only real magic damage dealer on the team. Um, that's going to make it pretty challenging. It also means that Hercules and Jungkook can itemize very, very heavily into magic defense yes. and have uh, basically their run of the map in the mid game. Well, there's a lot of physical damage on the side of Complexity. You've got, you know, Thor, Apollo, Bakasura, right? And that, you know, honestly, if they shut down Jerb early, that means they can buy physical protection and say, hey, right. all you have right. is that, you know, half baked chicken, and it's not going to be enough. No, you're right, and they can they can itemize physical and, f you know, b you know, force Jerby to hit ultimates. Right, I mean, and, and force Jerby to do all the damage. And, and we've seen this work. We've seen kind of four physicals in a raw or, you know, a, a, a melee right. a magic support in the raw being the one that's the primary damage dealer. But it's not his best role, I don't think, for the raw. But yep. with that, Dry Bear, let's go ahead and take a look at the game as the teams walk out of the base. To introduce them for you as well, the bottom side team wearing those blue trunks. And fighting under the tag, COG, oh. it's COG Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at Nuwa for MLC Stealth in the mid lane. Barracuda matching up with Jeff, the Sex Hindla in the duel lane as Rom and Athena. That puts Omegatron in the solo lane as Zhang Kuei, and it leaves Hercules in the jungle for Andy. Sure does. We saw Complexity come out there and do, look for an early gank, but they got spotted out early. And speaking of Complexity, the top side of the map defending the Titan of Chaos. We've got Incontinentia there on Gab Allied on Apollo Jerby. Running that chicken in the mid lane, and of course in the jungle, we've got our very strong Wiccan play in Thor, and Kiki, he's taking Bakasura up against John Quay. We'll see what he can do. His hunger matches his team's hunger at this point, and yeah. they know they have to take this match. This is a best of five. Game one went to prime, and at this point you're wondering, can Complexity change that whole momentum? You know, I, a lot of this matchup, and many do, but this one maybe in particular is going to come down to how well Wiccan can play. Right. Um, his Thor is going to be the uh, the make or break for this team right now. Can they keep Omega down? Can they make the space for Bakasura to farm? Can they let him put the pressure on to Zhang Kuei effectively? Uh, some of that comes down to can Thor pressure other lanes and force right. Anasura to not be there? I think in the 1v1 empty, Bakasura probably has the edge over Zhang Kuei in terms of how well he can utilize those first 10,000 kind of gold points that he's right. going to get. 
Um, but, you know, the Hercules out of the jungle, he does bring a lot of burst damage. He's going to be very good at securing camps. It's going to be a little tough for Thor to fight him in those early engagements. So we'll see how this one shakes out. Andy, uh, we'll see what his, his Hercules jungle looks like. I haven't seen this one in quite some time. Well, the best part about Kasura is he can actually eat the biggest minion and then push the wave and heal himself. And so he has that really strong control of the lane that allows him to stay on top. Now, the one thing that you can think about, right, the last two matches, Cog Red versus Dig and then Cog Prime versus Complexity, have been all about mobility, roaming, roaming, roaming. And so Prime says, you know what? If Complexity tries it this game, we've got Athena that can fly across the map. Damage on Incon on left side will force him to slow down. No taunt from Hinla just yet. See if he picks it up. This is a really early rotation from yeah. Weekend. Can they spot anybody out? He's going to port forward under Jeff Hinla. Doesn't have the wall, it looks like. Two points oh. in Mjolnir's or two men. Uh, let's actually check in on that. Weekend, yeah. Two points in Mjolnir's, or one point in Mjolnir's, two points in the Berserker Barrage, but still not enough damage to pick up a kill. Yeah, and he dodged that bullet really quickly and stepped away from the boulder. Mid lane, we see looking for the Earthbreaker, not going to find it. Clearing the wave out is Ainster. And honestly, look at the starting builds. Everything's very modest, except for that Bokasura going for the Heavy Hammer. This is a build we see a lot when you're trying to just lock down aggro. those kills. Yeah, so we'll see what Kiki or Na can do with it. And honestly, if Omega steps too far forward, he could be dead meat. Yeah, he'll have to come pretty far forward, though. I mean, Junkwei just so naturally tanky. So many, uh, so much HP, such a big pool there. Uh, left side, doesn't look like as much cooking. Right side, Kiki or not threatening to uh, turn the corner on that red buff, but nothing doing. Orange buff, still sitting on the left side of the map, unpicked up. Andy going to be making his way over there shortly, but Thor is in position as well. Double top left side, going to find Incon, going to find Ally as well. Shockwave up in the air. There goes the rotation. We're going to see Weekend on his way over. They're not going back just yet. There's the wall's going to come out shortly here. Looking for Jeff Hinla. There goes the wall. Can't go anywhere. The hammer comes out. Berserker Barrage is, is there. Enough? Jeff Hinla looking for the hit. Swings yes. the hammer. And first blood complexity. That's big for them to help them out. Also, Jerby is here to heal them up. Uh, the Nuwa's going to split the backside orange camp and probably those XP camps with the Hercules here. Uh, not sure if Jerby is getting the best out of his time by not rotating back immediately, and now he's got to be careful he's going to run five into weekend. the Hercules. Thor's level 5 now. He can fly. He's got his Anvil of Dawn ready to go. Innister and Stealth disengaging completely as Weekend rotates over. A severe lack of vision right now on both teams' part. In fact, I can't see a single ward on the map. Is that right? There are no wow. wards on the map right now. This is the first time all day we've seen this. Welcome to North America, ladies and gentlemen, where wards don't matter, and we just gank each other for funsies. That's how it's happening, but Weekend is making the best of it. The darkness is kind of where he was born here, and he's looking to try and capitalize on it as the mid camps are responding. Three minutes and 10 seconds is where you'll see they'll come on back up. Looks like the right camp will be the first one to spawn here, and they're going to go over there and try and take it down. Um, I want to see with no wards on the map, I want to see the old TSM strat go Gold Fury right now. <laughs> no, they're not. So, I mean, so what I'm talking about there is if you can force the uh, the order side team to take the right side camp. Oh, Boxer has ulted mid lane. There's the dunk yeah. as well. Force them back, but nothing. nothing. Out of that. I mean, Ugly. the Void is on the ground, but that's it. Athena Ultimate was not available. Still level four on Jeff Hinla. The Gold Fury is standing, and we're, there goes the first ward. We broke the silence. The peace and truce of wards has been broken. There's one on top of the Gold Fury, but that's going to be it. Right camp just now being taken down. It looks like... Actually, Complexity gets one mid cam, Prime gets the other. Uh, they took, uh, yes, yes, it did get cleaned up on the right side. So what I was talking about earlier there is if, if you can force the order team to take the right side camp as the chaos team, and you have the right god set up, which basically means a strong enough hunter, ideally Apollo or on her, you can take that gold fury while they take the right side camp as long as you feel comfortable with your map control. And there was a small window there. I think the Complexity had that, actually. We saw it a lot in the European Championship. It's actually originally an NA strat. Uh, it's a Team Dignitas strat, to be honest sure. with you. Um, but it's fallen out of favor, I think, in North America. But still an opportunity, nonetheless. Well, it's risky, right? Because you want to get that Hog 3 up soon. That's 600 right. gold right. you have to invest, which means you're not buying wards, you're not buying you know, consumables, you're not starting up your steel mail. And so if you're looking at that, it really is a big risk that may not pay off at all. And honestly, Complexity is not on that grind right now. Well, it'll work. No, it works if you have the jungler there as well with hog up you just use two hogs maybe one hog two one right. hog one and, and it's just enough burst damage especially with gods like raw that can heal up the apollo the apollo tank with serenade and do minions from out the stomach tanking that up if you can get over there in time incontinentia also able to get over there incontinentia did lock in his blinks so we will have that for the rest of the game and look for the initiation with that cataclysm or, is he gonna go up in the air well let's see he doesn't have or he does have the ultimate available now coming offline but i believe he's been spotted out here yes they have the ward coverage going into the fire giant what was a, a very strange lull in the action with no... Oh, Weekend doesn't see him, also he's still behind him. This could oh be boy. trouble. In comes the Athena as well. Looks like they want to tee off on a Kiki, however. And in they come. The dashing forward is going to be Jeff Hinlin in a moment, but it looks like Complexity has made their way out of this. Luckily, actually. I mean, with the, them not noticing that mid lane rotation, that could have gotten ugly very quickly. 
Well, right now we're going to see a large amount of gold per minute there for both junglers. Weekend is taking the cake, though. He is skyrocketing, pun intended. And that's what you like to see from Thor. I mean, Thor is very much a, you know, tempo-driving character. He likes to get the game started yeah, fast yeah, and keep news. it going at that movement. So complexity has got a big lead as far as, you know, what characters are getting the right farm. Now, the golden experience is pretty much dead even. In fact, there's a small experience lead here for Prime right now. But it's all going to come down to objectives. And I think complexity has the right team comp to make it. They just need to rely on rotations from allied when the team fight starts. Yeah, and that entire advantage for Weekend is just that first blood, really. That's right. Um, and, and you can just see how effective that can be, especially if the game stalemates for another 5-10 minutes. That kill uh, just continues to put him ever so slightly ahead now. If he can steal a couple camps away from the Hercules, who is not quite as strong until he's maybe level 10, 11, 12, and his ability is going to be able to kill the wave very quickly, especially with the hog and can, and can easily contest. Uh, Weekend can bully him just a little bit for a couple minutes here. The camp's going to be coming back up left side. Looks like it's going to go to complexity there, ready to roll. We also see Allied beating out Barracuda in the long lane. He's beating him in gold and experience, and he's keeping that motion going. You look at the stacks here. Actually, about, uh, 11 stacks in Devour's Gauntlet there for Allied across the way. One stack, now three there for Barracuda. So that motion is great, and so is stealing the movement speed buff away the left side of the map. Yeah, that goes to Weekend. We can probably, you know, looking to at least pressure Barracuda here with the full wave coming in. They can do pretty good work to this ROM. They're going to stun him out. They're going to hit him with a hammer as well, doing a uh, an okay amount of damage. Only sitting at level two, electing to max out that Berserker Barrage first, sitting at rank four, was Weekend. Well, Complexity actually missed out on both mid camps there as Prime was already in place. That's going to help out in the gold department, but it's still in slight very, favor very to game. Complexity. This game is waiting to take off. Davis right side at the one versus one. Kiki's he, got the sprint. He's got the bite. He's looking for dinner. The dinner bell is ringing, but it's not going to be enough. He will back off towards the tower, and Kiki, he's sending a message, but again, your Jungkwe is a hard one. It gives him a lot of lane control, though. He'll farm up this wave for free, shove it into the tower, and probably force out Omega to buy teleport, which he has done. Leveling it to rank two before heading over, and boom, there he is, right back, missing only out on about three minions there. Goal per minute still on the top is going to be weak in second in place. It's going to be Kiki or Na sending his lane opponent back to the base here, as you do see Omega hold Na. But again, Omega is going to go for that teleport, so he's back to the lane instantaneously. He's got a sprint this time around, which will go into the heavenly agility yet again. And so he's got mobility, he's got teleportation, but you know the vision seems to be in favor of Prime right now. He's much heavier, heavier Lily invested into his actives this game, though, which means the Warlock Sash time is going to be a lot later if he likes to go for it. Um, yeah, Prime is slipping a bit in this game, but still just one kill separating and, uh, and less than a thousand golden experience. So it's, it's really anybody's game, but it's good for complexity that at least they get this 10 minute, 20 minute period that maybe they're yeah. probably going to get out of this game where they're winning. <laughs> and, and kind of, you know, remember what that feels like as Cognitive looks to aggress on the left side. Gold Fury is standing. They've got the, the motion here to try and take something away. I don't see... Nope, that is not in vision. Unfortunately, the Sentry Wards are too far apart, and they won't be seeing each other. So two Sentry Wards alone in the jungle here. Mid lane is being pushed up effectively. There is no mid camp spawning just yet. Uh, the, the camps are there. Double taunt. Big damage. Earthbreaker. Driving Strike coming out. Going to miss there. We can look for this rock. Donk. And the boulder takes him down. One ult into the sky. The second one uh, not going to be there. And, and, well, an answer kill coming back on the way of Prime. Wow. And, well, you know, it wasn't really that pretty. <laughs> Honestly, they used the Hercules Baller to secure it, but it was enough. Uh, they probably wanted Jerby there as well, coming off of that double taunt, but unable to secure that. And, unfortunately for them, they're not going to be able to get much out of that kill. Complexity stole away their orange buff. They're going to take their own. No real XP to strip, no towers to push, no objectives on that side of the map. So, well, Prime just takes the kill, and they're happy with it. It's going to draw the game to basically dead even. Look at the player damage right now. We see a lot of players in the bottom here. In fact, so far, Jerby has not been able to... He's done 400 player damage overall, which means he has not harassed really anyone. Uh, not able to rotate with the motion of Prime just yet. But he's got that heal, which is going to make a big difference right now. Uh, if you look at his numbers, he's actually healed up a very strong 2600. So yeah. he's definitely got that utility. Yeah, that early rotation over the left side where he healed up all four of his teammates really helped him out, I think. Yep, I think so. It might have been all of them, actually. Yeah, yeah, on that front, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a lot of where the healing has come from. Uh, mid lane, stealth, nope, and Khan's just like, hey, how you doing, rolls right past him and looks to secure hey. these right side camps. Well, it's cleared out here, the right side camp spawning shortly, but not as shortly as they'd like, yeah, it's not flashing seconds. right now. Yeah, it's got a little bit less to go. Uh, left side, we do have Jeff Hinla, Babing, Barracuda, and again, it seems like the Athena Ultimate is helping Prime stay around the map, but Complexity is still beating it by a slight margin here, uh, looking for nothing. I mean, it, it, this is a bit of a lull as they're looking for more golden experience.
Right side camps are up. Kiki or Nas gonna go ahead and start them. Omega's here, but I don't think he's gonna be able to get around this corner fast enough. They do have good vision, and they're gonna trap him in between oh. Andy and Omega. Oh. Are they gonna use the John Quay Ultimate here is a question. Up goes the Thor. Omega gonna try to aggress into Kiki, but with that stun coming in from Weak, oh. they stopped him in their traps. Oh. Omega's getting bursted. The boulder comes through again. Andy's gonna try to fight this, but in comes the Allied on the back of the Chariot, but Hindla's here as well. Damage mitigation doing a lot. They stun that Allied now. Allied's maybe gonna keep this one away. He's gonna make his way out, but the Rom snipes. That doesn't matter. The third one's not needed. Andy picks up the kill. He pushes back Incon again. He's surrounded. Incon to fall. Complexity. Cognitive has brought this one right back in their favor. Four kills to two. Complexity doesn't have an answer for that one. It looked like they had a good turnaround, but Prime was ready for it. The Earthbreaker from Anister is all they needed to drive that one home. And at this point, they're looking to take possibly the gold fear, and they're going to get it for free at the gold numbers right now. You see 1600, uh, 600, sorry. That's going to put them at 2100 gold in the lead when the gold fear is dead. They've got 1100 experience as well. Kiki is trying to pressure. Not much he can do. He just got harassed for well over half of his HP pool there. Well, yeah. the crowd, a lot of fans out there for yeah, Cog. Cognitive is, uh, they, they've now pulled ahead by a reasonable amount here in this game to say that they have a lead. They're taking an orange buff on the backside as well for the Hercules. And well, while Andy hasn't necessarily been like a damage carry in this game, he has put himself in positions where they felt like they had to fight him. And you just can't burst down a god like Hercules. Even nope. if he has no mana, even if he has, you know, half HP, you're just not going to kill him in any less than about 30 seconds unless you have five gods hitting him. Uh, and you just saw it there. Even with the Thor reinitiation from Weaken, catching two, getting a kill, wasn't enough to secure ultimately what they were looking for. Right side, it's going to be the Jonque, and he's in a bit of trouble as Kiki's going to run him down. It One should more be bite. Enough. Indeed it is. Man, Kiki is they, hungry. Can they get this tower, though? No, they're on the full sprint back. It's smart. And no, it's not smart. It's bad warding. Well, at the same point, right? I think they, they're looking to just go back, get the itemization, and look for another push. I think they're not really looking for the hungry. It's, and they're it's not a free tower, right? If they sure. have wards on the right side of the map at all, they realize that there's nothing coming in. They can take that tower, at least pressure it enough that they can take it in the next wave with no wards. And let's take a, actually, let's check in here. Let's see how many wards Kiki's placed. Kiki has placed three wards this game. Right, yep. and on the other side, the Zhang Kui also at three. So the vision has been really lax on this side of the map altogether, and I think that's a place to improve. It's a bad point, but they got the Omegatron. That's going to put the gold numbers a little bit lower, and they got experience all tied up here. So I think it's a perfect play. Blake in the mid lane, look at the initiation. There's MLC Stealth, but Athena's going to dunk from above. There's a Siri Page! Jeremy takes the shot! Stealth is out of the fight! Hitler's knocked away there from Allied. They got to take this there. Oh, up in yeah. the air goes Barracuda. The shots will come down any second now. Looking for Hinla, takes it! It's going to be another kill. Complexity driving it home! Did uh, Allied is uh, is playing very, very well in this game. Barracuda actually Weakens tries to backstab up. here. He's done. Weakens up! Weaken, uh, he can't aggress into the tower here, not into Andy. They don't need to give another one back into that, uh, that big Hercules, but they do draw more kills to their side. Six kills now to four in favor of Complexity. Gold and experience back to pretty much even. They take the XP lead as these gods continue to gain levels. They're getting more and more from the kills. About 2,000 experience on the side of Complexity, but not enough to be a big lead. Except for in the solo line here, where Kiki, after that last solo kill, is up two levels on Omega, even with the teleport. We're going to see Kiki push up the right side lane, keep this up to the tower. The mid tower will be falling down pretty shortly here. Imagine they'll be able to take this out. Another 500 gold that will tie up the game right now. 2600 experience in favor of Complexity. The gold is dead even. The gold fairy is pretty far away, about two and a half minutes. The yes, fire giant stands. Far. But at this point, they have effectively nullified anything Prime has done up to this point, and they're going to lean on that experience going forward. And I think their slow and cautious approach to reacting this is a problem, right? When you start to fall behind the beginning, we see a lot of teams overreact. Like, oh, yeah. oh God, we're screwed. Make a play. Yeah. And so this complexity is, okay, let's wait. We get the kill in the right lanes, back off, leave the tower alone. We're going to go to the mid lane, get a pick, back off, leave it alone. They get the mid camps, and once they build up enough of an opportunity, they go for it. The longer this goes on, the longer they have the lead, the better they feel about game three, right. the better they feel about this game, especially if they win it, right? Morale's just, huge. Just even, even if they end up losing this game, you know, in a long kind of drawn out 40 minute, 50 minute game, which is what it, you know, looks like it would go to for Prime to win it, given the momentum complexity has, they still feel pretty good about their early and mid game showing. They have to. Right. So, all things told, I feel like even as we look at the graphs evening out, we're also seeing kind of the affect of the teams evening out. We see XP per minute on top. It's going to be Kiki and Jerby there. Uh, gold per minute. We're going to see, again, Kiki on the top as well with weak and right oh, side. Look for Omega. Omega. A lot He's of by himself. There's the hammer coming out. He's not going to teleport on it, actually. Oh, now it's Kiki. Oh, wow. Did he disjoint that? 
What a play. Left side lane. Allied actually picks up a kill on a Barracuda as well with Geb to support him. Wow. No return kill as well. Bakasura. Could He's be a fire no giant, land. though. This is a fire giant opportunity. I mean, you see Allied across the map. He's got an ultimate available. Yeah, they know Kiki. Kiki home. Yeah, they know Kiki's in some godforsaken place. And they know Weak was weak as well. I mean, he wow. ended up going down in low HP. They're not going to go for it. Gold Fury will be up pretty shortly here in just about one minute. And so, you know, Kapusi gets another shot in onto Prime. No major gain just yet in gold, but experience is still standing. Yeah, big news here. I mean, Allied, Allied's beating Barracuda. And Bakasur is being Jean Quay. They're two primary DPSers in yep. the uh, later stages of the mid game. Are online now, doing very well for themselves. The Thor a bit behind, but he has a Hog 3, which means that Weekend is noticing that he's behind and he's going to add a little bit to that support side as well. Going to use that dunk to try to steal some objectives away if they fall a bit behind. He's going to be building into a Jotun's Wrath. He's finishing that up, so he's going to start kind of coming out of his shell a bit here now. Well, it seems still stay on that tier 2 combat boost. He doesn't get movement speed from his passive. Omega still pick that up there. refuses uh, to buy wards. Well, Weekend is hanging out here. He's going to spot it out. Oh, he's going to move forward. Where's Omega going? Where's your back bait now, Omega? The Berserker Barrage comes on out by himself. Nowhere to go. Damage on top. Where's the taunt? Omega Come on, boys. Taunt. gets destroyed. Not taunt this time. Oh, I, was looking, I was looking for the complexity taunts there. Just give it right back to him. They're going to take the right side tower as well. Two tier ones down on the side of Prime. Complexity is. with a nice little lead they've carved out for themselves. 5,500 experience, now 1,000 gold. The biggest no. Uh, at one point, Prime was up 2,000 gold around the 11 and a half minute mark, but that's been battled all the way back. A 3K gold swing now in favor of Complexity. Well, see, the gold theory is going to be started up by Complexity. Rotation coming out from Anister. They don't. Yeah, they may not have enough damage tough. to take this. I would leash this, yeah, honestly. Yeah, they're going to leash it. Yeah, there for sure. Go. Oh, yeah, Athena ult. Athena. Yeah, Barracuda. Incon got to get himself out, but... Andy actually elected to try to stun out Allied. Allied should be okay, especially with that Weakens Cataclysm up. to bail him out. Look for the the shield already used. Boulder coming through is very, very low. New ult is going to be enough to clean it out. Barracuda takes to the sky as well, putting in his damage. And Cognitive Prime rolls forward, looking for more kills. Can they clean up Incon as well? This could turn into a Fire Giant if they are. He's got the card on. Yes, he's dead to Barracuda. To the right side of the map they go. Can they find Weak as well under the tower? Yes, they can. It's a three-man wipe so far. They're going to keep going in. Jeremy could be in some troubles. Andy moves forward. Can he hit the Earthshaker? No. Falling back to the Tier 1. And they're going to take Gold Fury that's just come up on the right side tier two Kiki got it Kiki and he's gonna be able to pressure the Phoenix here but they're sending back no, Omega they're sending back Omega and that's gonna be plenty yep. to hold the Phoenix they take the gold fury for free Omega is gonna defend that right side Phoenix will be held the gold fury will be taken down as well by Prime nice rotation even Anister is pushing Jeremy back to the tier two tower they've got presence all over the map especially given the fact that you know the Megatron he's got that teleport so if they need him back at the gold fury they put a war down he teleports the teleport is working so well for John Quay right now at this point complexity is looking for another turn around. It seems like they can't get too far ahead before Prime turns it on their head. Yeah, Cog is now going to pressure this Tier 1. Answer back there. That's going to help recoup some of the gold. It's going to fall to this minion wave, and they're going to get out safely. An excellent engagement from Prime. They take two objectives on it, and they're doing exactly what you have to do when you're from behind. Win a fight, take objectives, get the gold, get the experience. Well, we're going to see MLC Stealth pick up that Divine Ruin pretty shortly here. He's stacking up his Warlock Sash. He's on that Enchanted Trinket, and once he has it, the heals from Ra will be mitigated very yes. heavily. Life I steal mean, as well. 40% drop in, H in healing for eight seconds. That Globally. is absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah, it also it hurts the Bakasura with the Devour Minions, right. hurts the Raw Heals, hurts the Lifesteal out of the uh, the Apollo. So it's gonna, you know, it, it's kind of always a good idea to buy this item on Nuwa, it feels like. Even if you're not looking at pure healers like a Raw, yep. there's still enough Lifesteal, especially on the Hunter. There's gonna be people getting, you know, even a Zhang Kuei, things like, you know, there's always health coming into the system and you can reduce that by 40%. Well, why not do it? Yeah, Bakasura's Eat Minion will be limited on top of everything else. We're gonna see, you know, Anister 3 0 and 2 right now is gonna pick up that Shifter Shield. He is now a high damaging invincible character uh, he did not end up going down the road yeah. of a uh, meditation so there's somewhere in the crowd DM Brandon is having one tiny tiny tier for that one <laughs> uh, but at this point you know 18 and a half minutes in the game eight to seven this game is very very close uh, experience favors complexity gold favors prime but not by so much it's really gonna come down to the next big objective it's a little bit of a nightmare for complexity here with the like the itemization into physical but they're not getting the damage onto Hercules to kill him right like there's not enough burst out of Jerby to really pressure the Hercules so he can build straight physical protection and damage and uh, it, it just puts more and more pressure onto the back of that raw being played by Jerby on the side of complexity Player damage, 10k has been broken here by MLC Stealth on that new way with the ultimate, but Weaken sitting in second place for damage dealt. Huge amount of numbers with the rotations, and then of course it's going to be right back into Prime with Barracuda and of course Omega. So, you know, you look for the major team fight initiation from Complex, they got to watch that Athena taunt. That's been a big bane for their existence so far. Mm -hmm. Three or four man taunts can end a team fight. It looks like another one might be starting up shortly. 
Yeah, Jerebs has pretty good vision here, but they're going to place down a counter ward. Does this, are these, do these see? Oh, the dog. No. Just barely. Gab ultimate. There's oh, a shot. Jerebs gets the ultimate. Is, Finds stealth. Knocking down from above his ally. The skies are running down from above all over the place. And stealth is forced away. Hinla's caught out. Five versus one. Rob's got major AoE, but nothing he can give. Jeff Hinla falls down. Yeah, it's all good. They got raw heals to siege this tier one. They can probably siege a tier two as well in the meantime. And he says, I'll take my orange buff. I don't want you having that as well on top of everything else. It's They're going to be full health moving into this tower. Incon just going to tank it up for the team until the minions make their way in. They leash it over to the big minion, and they take the tower here. They're going to pressure the tier two as well. 20 seconds for MLC Stealth and Jeff Hindler should be free for them. Uh, taking out the wave, stunning it for, you know, funsies, I guess, there <laughs> was, was the Thor looking for. To and pick it's They just need to ignore Andy here. Just, like, don't let him do too much oh, damage. Oh, we can get ignore the damage is too much. Like this, right, like, he's going to single hand. Oh, whoa, there's the burst from Jerb. Finally brings it forward. That's exactly what they needed to find. They needed to find that easy pick onto him now with the 31 stacks on the Warlock Sash. Does Jerby have? He's got some decent magical power coming off the back of that. About 160, but he really needs to help Sarah that up because as you see, the only answer to Hercules is magical burst right now. Well, I mean, you saw it. Like, you know, we want this tower. And he's like, hey, take me instead. They're like, okay, I'm oh, fine. Yeah. Right, yeah. And, you know, I, I would have preferred to see them zone him somehow and try to take that tower just for the map control. Um, but you got the damage. It's a, you know, once again, we kind of say this you know, often, but it's a morale win for them. Be like, yeah. oh, he actually can die. Yep. He is not invincible. And then, you know, we see the gold fairy spawning up here in just about a minute and 20 seconds. You know, Complexity has their eye on it. They have the gold lead finally. The experience is still getting bigger and bigger. And that's been kind of the foundation for Complexity in this match. They've been sitting on an experience lead the entire game, and it's yeah, rather yeah. substantial. You've got 6,800 experience in favor of Complexity, and they're leaning on that. They got extra abilities, they got lower cooldowns, they got higher base damage, and it's working in their favor. Look at the animization right now. You can see that Jeremy is now going to be going for a Chronos Pendant and or a Rana Tahuti. I imagine it will be a Chronos Pendant. They yeah, need more heals on the battlefield right now. Uh, finishing the boots is going to be kicky or not. Now going to chin size complete as well. A lot of damage, especially against, uh, you know, Hercules. He's going to be an easy target with that chin size. He is the ideal target for the chin size, but the question is, can you actually kill him before he kills you? Because once he gets down to about 60% HP and he turns around and starts hitting you, his passive adds more and more damage. We have a big fight breaking out in the mid lane. The raw damage comes through. Kiki's starting to fall a bit low, but he's going to ult, and in comes a Gebold as well. We can just off the mark, unfortunately. Gets a lot of damage on. They kill Andy yet again. Nua. Nua ult, not enough to kill off Kiki there. And now it's going to be Barracuda. a mega moving forward. He's got to do a lot of damage. Barracuda. Barracuda. Down goes Weaken indeed, and can Complexity find an easy way out of this fight? In the backside, it's Allied versus Stealth. Allied having a hard time finding the damage as well. Jeff Hinless now there. One more hit's going to do the it. The comes through. Incon should be able to pick this up. But Barracuda Omega are there, and now it's Complexity getting closed in on. Oh, this has been turned all the way around, but no, Kiki runs back into this fight. So low is Teleport. Ally getting bursted down. Yes, he falls to Barracuda. Omega falls to Incon. The fight rages on. It's a 2v2 in the jungle. And it's Jeff Hinlow is the next to fall. It looks like Kiki close the distance through the shield wall. Leaping forward, penning him. Needs two hits. Shot. Jeff Hinlow is going to have a dash coming up again in just a moment. There it is. He's going to dash away. Nice just rotation. Now one hit. Can he have the second hit? Incon, the roll as well. Incon, the roll. The there it is, Jeff Hill in a fall. Shockwave coming Ladies on out. Ladies gentlemen, what a fight that was. I think we had, what, seven or eight okay. kills across that. It's okay. Barracuda's got the game. He's been playing RPG. Yeah, Barracuda. He's, he's doing the boss fight across the map. He's got that gold fury. He's locking it in. He's by himself. He's like, you Smart. know what, team? I got this. It's brilliant. Yeah. And so he says, you know what? This, this team fight is a loss. I think really what made that team fight perfect, and this is hard to know as a player, mm. do I go home and heal or do I stay and fight? Kiki said, nah, I'm going home as Anderson gets forced out. The fights right. are coming through. Look at that damage from chin size. The dunk comes out. Dan why are they still is fighting? gonna go down. Well, the gold fire. will fall. That's fire but giant. Complexity says, why do we care? It's fire giant. I, I just have no idea what happened there. Uh, Anderson came back wow. in the fight. He got blown up by the Thor rotation coming back in. Uh, yeah, big big play. You're right. And that last engagement by Kiki going back to the base and using it that teleported. teleport to come back That's in. That's right. Brilliant stuff there. Uh, but this is a free fire giant going to Complexity. They're uncontested. They traded for the Gold Fury. Apollo's in his ultimate. He's going to be able to rally. He's going to go to the left side of the map looking for that Gold Fury. <laughs> There's nothing there. It's not there. Sorry, Allied. <laughs> Sent by us to go and farm minions. That's right. Well, at this point, guys, if you're a fan of Complexity, they need your support right now because this is the game they want to take. They want to stop it one and one and put this series dead even and look for the next match. They're doing that fantastically. Prime has had no answer so far. They haven't been able to build a lead. They need. The experience keeps getting bigger and bigger, Bart. 8,300 in favor of Complexity. They've got a slight gold lead, but they have the Fire Giant buff. And you look at it. Kiki can counter Omega and Anister. He's got that HP targeting ability. Allows him to just burst down tanky targets. Ally can box with almost anyone, including Barracuda. And Stellar's ultimate is not doing enough yet because you go for that utility-based Nua build. You get the Divine Ruin. You get the Warlock Sash. You're saying, okay, Warlock Sash makes me impervious to burst. Mm -hmm. Divine Ruin makes you impervious to heals. I'm fine, right? But you don't have that penetration and damage until later. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, another interesting thing about how this game has gone is that Weaken has just done just enough. Right? right. Which is very different from how this team normally wins games. Usually it's Weaken dictating the pace. This time it's Weaken just getting by, which is which is interesting. Is Weaken suffering from a little bit of that, those land jitters maybe? Uh, to, uh, just, it looks a little bit like how Andy used to look, where he was such a good player up until he came to land and then started to fall off. Right. But we've seen that he's done very, very well for himself. It's kind of shored that up. This Hercules has been Ooh. pretty good. But he's gotten caught out now a few times. Blessing from again. behind. Oh, Incon bump, moves forward. He used a Cataclysm. Backside, Kiki is there. This is a lot of damage coming out. He's going to force Barracuda and Omega out of the fight. Take it to the sky is the new MLC still trying to bail himself out. We can move forward, but the Gap Shield is there. He's starting to get a bit low. And for now, Cognitive is going to hold uh -oh. that to a big uh -oh. knockback. Uh -oh. Jeremy in some trouble, as is Allied. And he's in the front line, but he gets mezzed out. The burst comes through from Jeremy, and he has to bring the damage here. He has no ultimate available. Kiki finds a kill on Omega. Mega, that helps out a bit. Allied's feeling ballsy. He wants to go deep here. Crashing in. He misses everybody. Allied knows what's the uprights, and that's going to be it for complexity. They have to fall back. They're still alive. Or do they, though? They've got Raw Heal. They're keeping themselves alive. They're all back to half HP or more. Searing Pain going to come out, not going to land as Stealth goes back to the base. I think it's going to be minions. a four versus five here. They go for the Phoenix. The Phoenix getting lower ballsy. and lower. Earthburn comes out. Driving Strike not going to land. Nice stun. Nice block. Nice wall. Kiki looking for the damage. It's all in complexity's hand right now as Stealth is trying to find the damage. They're here goes the dash away from Jeff Hinla. The Phoenix falls and complexity is unfazed. Kiki's feeling himself, man. I mean, it, it has gross. the magic blessing. He just keeps going on in and in and in and just doing the damage. I mean, let's take a look at how much he's done so far in this game. Almost 19,000 player damage. That is leading all players on a Bakasura. Oh my God. Well, I mean, this is exactly what they wanted, right? And I love the fact that Complexity decided, hey, we're going to analyze the first game and decide to make better decisions here. At this point, you see Complexity say, okay, we're going to small gain and peel back. Small gain and peel back. And if you have that discipline, you can easily come back in a game of Smite. Whereas if you look for the big gain, you leave yourself open for major mistakes. And even with the raw heal, they're able to kind of fall back, heal, come back. They weren't looking for the all-in punch in the solo lane, in the mid lane, in the long lane. From across the map, they were making very cautious and stable, progressive oh, decisions. Look at Kiki. That got them here. Kiki's like small gains? No. Kiki's going for harsh gains. Harsh gains? Harsh gains That's for Kiki. Right. He teleports into the left side of the map, gonna continue the pressure over there. Force this one up, not let them push it out so that the pressure continues on over on the far left side so they can pressure the mid and the right, take that fire giant when it comes back up. That's the plan for complexity. They just have to execute now, really, and, and hats off to Jerby in this game, finding a lot of player damage out of this raw is exactly how he needed to play it. Gets 11k, it's not ideal, but it's been enough so far. You know, honestly, Kiki has outdamaged a new wall with an AoE ultimate and has placed the same amount of wards as his support. 13 wards. Kiki is on oh, fire on this game. Yeah, they can't even contest this mid Phoenix push. It looks like his ally comes crashing in. They may look for Jeff Hinlin to move forward, but it's Kiki, hot. they just lose his Magi's Blessing and they, you know, they count that as a win. No Magi's Blessing onto the Bakasura, moving over to the final Phoenix. Fire Giant back up in one minute, five seconds. A little bit early on the retreat. Would like to see them. Yeah, is this a bait? It is. They have no vision. They know it. The rotation no, yeah, might come out here. They see Weekend oh, going up into the sky. Up. They should still be able to catch out Andy or MLC Stealth if they want him. There is the Athena ultimate on top of Stealth trying to bail him out. In comes the Thor. They're going to go for Andy. And Andy, he's going to chase them away from the fight. But it looks like he's still dead. Allie needs to hit a couple more shots. The heal starts to come through. It's not enough. Jeremy finds that kill. But in the meantime, Kiki does go down. So they're able to trade one for one there, Kinkog. That's really good news for them. Gold Fury. I'm sorry, Fire Giant. 36 seconds. Gold Fury in about 20. And Complexity is going to fall back and look to pick up that major map objective. Uh, they, uh, they've just placed the ward right in that sentry. That's yeah. a really, really nicely placed sentry there. And that is well, to it, the credit it was of greedy. Omega. It was greedy from complexity. They stood a little bit too long in the fight, and they were looking for more than they could have got. Five they've seconds. got two phoenixes down. They're looking for the fire giant. They're back here. They're able to sustain it. Now, it's up to Prime, right? They're pushing the left side of lane. Omega has that teleport. So we can sit on the left side, clear it out, true, push up true. to the half map, and then teleport over the fire giant. At this point, they've got a few seconds left. Five seconds remaining. Five, four, three, two, one. Blink in. Looking for Jeff Hinlet. This is oh, going to be huge. Yeah. If they take him down, there's no hog left. Left. Very, that is it. Very Complexity play from Jeff. Have I, took this down. Why was, why was he there? I don't know. You know. Honestly, he was looking to ward. He wanted to ward the fire giant, but he did not know if it was safe or not. He went anyway. Yeah, I mean, I guess he has to make that play in some regards, but they knew they were there. They knew they had that ward of the red buff, and they saw that they were there. I mean, where else would they be, right? I think he was trying to see on the backside ward through, but it doesn't matter. Complexity takes fire giant number two on their side. That's going to, yeah, they're sitting at. A lot of experience, but about five and a half thousand gold. The experience is starting to matter less and less as the players hit level 20. Right. The Fire Giant buff is uh, is really the important The buff here. clears the gap in the gold. The gold may not be a lot, but it's stacking on top of the Fire Giant buff, and now they cannot be contested at open ground. That's they right. have to fight on top of a Titan or a Phoenix at this point, but they only have one Phoenix to fight on. The left Phoenix will be responding shortly, uh, just about 30, 40 seconds left until that comes back up. And once it's back up, it's just going to die pretty quickly if they're not careful. Incon's higher level than Weaken. That's rough.
That is real rough. That's uh, why uh, you make your captain a support player, because he just calls the shots so well. Incon, just such a great long-term smite player. He's been around for quite some time. Uh, has been basically almost every role. He's been mid laner. He's been a duo lane support, and I believe he was briefly a solo laner as well. Yep. Um, going for that, that well, sun touch hitting, you know, getting the round. I want to talk a little bit about I know, Kiki. I mean, look at it. He's top XP in a minute. At this point, Omega hasn't done a single lick of damage to a tower. He has zero structure damage. Omega yeah. has been shut down so bullied, hard bullied by Kiki. By oh, it's absolute shutdown. I mean, there's nothing Omega could have done in this game, and it's all because of Kiki. That's the danger of picking that soul laner so early in the draft. And now in comes Complexity. They don't look like they can be stopped. MLC Cell takes to the sky, but is it going to be enough? Kiki or not, just not dropping fast enough. In comes Omega. They may be able to pick Boom. up. They will with the boulder. It's very good at getting the credit. But in comes Weak and Andy in a lot of trouble. Do not chase the Hercules, boys. You got to go for the Phoenixes. There you go. They take that left side Phoenix down again. That makes this push worth it. Ally takes the sky. He's going to come crashing in. Down goes Andy. Jeff Henley to fall as well, but a big taunt before he does. Doesn't matter. Double kill for Ally. Three members wow. still standing of Cog. And somehow Barracuda's got to find a way to just make this one happen for his team. But it's going to be really, really tough as complexity comes moving forward. Incon is there. But no, no, no. They, they pop the brakes and they say, look, boys, let's go back. Let's, uh, let's heal flip. up with the raw. Let's take this right side. Flip that E-Bray, come back on the right side. They got the heal. Now, they don't really have Kiki, but the second he comes up, he can teleport down there. So they'll have that assistance immediately. And that damage is what they need. They need the burst to kill Omega, and they know it. They don't want to go for an extended engagement and get nothing for it. Full defense here. It's a four versus three on the right side of the map. 21 to 12. Complexity is looking to take the second game off Prime, who looked unbeatable last game. Up, up in the air goes Weekend. Looking for the shot of Barracuda. Going to find Omega. There goes the damage. Siri Pain going to miss, but they're looking for Barra. It's going to be a big stun. Big hammer big damage as they God. force him out of the fight again the positioning of barracuda is just so amazing that was just like the perfect role to get him out of all of that damage he finds a way to win through that fight but complexity will take out the final phoenix now Three as phoenix it is down and uh i'm not sure that prime can stop them from just diving here well so far barracuda has done 24,000 player damage and so far, Jeremy has healed 24,000 player damage. <laughs> so, he, I mean, the healing coming out from Raw is keeping them going. That's the problem. The sustain is so powerful. Blink in, incontinential. Looking for the shot on Omega. Going to find it. Hammer. Oh, the big block. Nowhere so to go. Good. Excellent, excellent so play alone. by Weekend. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a Never nice boulder as well coming out, but it's just Kiki. not enough. Omega, uh, well, he's already out of this fight as Kiki moves forward. That's been kind of the answer for Kiki so far. He does die to uh -oh. the new A lot of damage on the complexity, but they're standing in that raw heal. And down goes Barracuda before he can do the damage. Kiki wants to do some as, I'm sorry, MLC Stealth wants to do some here, but Jeff Hinlis down. It's just Stealth remaining How is and no fighting. One dead? And he just can't find the kill. Mjolnir's Atumi comes through. One more hit to do it. And down he does go. Complexity with the Deicide. That's the game, ladies and gentlemen. Complexity Gaming wins for the first time in this tournament. After losing the first game, it's been a very one-sided tournament so far. Yeah. But it's all squared at one and one in set number two here. A big win, a big momentum win for Complexity Gaming, Dry Bear. I mean, that positioning was perfect the last fight for Complexity. They were all at about negative 1,000 HP. I mean, they, they had this little <laughs> sliver, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little sliver. And they were just moving around, dodging, ducking, diving. They had the raw heal on top. They had the each statement to buy time. Geb shield on there. And there's nothing that Prime could have done to stop the momentum of Complexity. They were just rolling there. It was amazing, amazing effort there. Uh, a lot of this one to me came down to Allied winning in the lane over Barracuda. Oh, yeah. Weekend doing just enough and Jerby doing it really may be more than you would have expected out of Jerby on the Raw, showing us that, you know, he's been in the boot camp and he, he found a lot of magic damage where they needed it oh, yeah. so desperately to take down that Hercules. Finding a way to get a win is complexity, but as we said, a lot of it coming on the back of Ally. Let's toss it over to Kret on the replay to show us how Ally did it. Kret, take it away, buddy. All right, guys. Well, Allied, last game didn't have much success. This game on Apollo, he showed Barracuda what's up. Let's roll it forward and see what Allied can do. He's going up in the air on that chariot, comes crashing down onto two. Nice AOE damage looking for Barracuda. Finds it so beautiful, but turns around with the taunt looking for Jeff. Will be able to pick up the kill with the auto attack. Dashes forward and forces Anister out. Now turning around going directly for the tower for the objective because the structures are what matters. This inter or this um, replay is the quintessential hunter play. Let's roll it back and take one more look because Allied is role playing perfectly. Roll it forward up in the air, gets as much damage as he can with his abilities, forces Barracuda out, looks for the kill, doesn't quite find it, turns onto the target of opportunity. It's Jeff Hinla. Sees, uh, looks if he can get anything else, but he can't. So now he's just going to go directly for the objective for the structure, which is what matters because structures win you games and complexity just won. We're going to go to F. Dot with an interview.